I officially have way too many paints, and while trying to come up with my own custom chapter colors for my Space Marines, I decided we'll let the gods decide. And by gods, I mean the dice gods. Well, hey there, hobby heroes. I'm feeling a little bit like a gambling man today, so we're gonna try a little something new called Three Paint Roulette. And as a bit of foreshadowing, by the time we get to the end of this video, I'm gonna need your help. Trust me, you'll figure it out when we get there. Anyway, let's get to the rules of this game and how the hell we're actually gonna get this miniature painted. What I'm going to do is take my five different paint racks and randomly roll three times. Each time I will then have to roll on another table to determine which random paint off of that rack will be used. Before we get down to the actual rolling of the dice, let's talk about some house rules. First of all, I'm allowing myself to use my favorite black and my favorite white for this project. Therefore, I'm not going to allow myself to roll a black or a white paint because I already have those. Next, I'm not using really thin paints as options here, meaning inks, washes, contrast paints, and the like. I need all three of my colors to be able to work from very opaque and thick paint down to thin. So I'm just not allowing myself to roll those. And finally, I'm not allowing myself to roll for metallics as well. Now, I'm not saying that metallics couldn't be a cool option here, but it really does limit the use of that color. And when I only have three, I need each one to be able to pull its weight. Because we have five racks to pull from, I'm gonna roll a 10-sided dice, divide it by two, you know how this works. First roll is a nine, meaning it's coming from rack five. Now I counted out all the paints and it looks like I have 50 on that rack. So if I roll number 50 or lower, we're gonna take that paint. If not, we're gonna roll again until we get 50 or lower. Here we go. 10, let's take a look. Number 10 from that paint rack was Woodland Green by Nocturna. All right, this seems to be a nice deep desaturated green um okay some place to start can't tell if i like that outcome or don't but i like green so we've got a green let's roll again 50 that means it comes one two three four five six it means it's coming from rack three let's see what we get that's too large 48 48 gave us faded plum by pro acryl okay all right so we've got a darker desaturated green and a lilac looking color. Very pretty. Uh, can go worse. I'm kind of like where this is going. We got one more color to pick from. Let's see what it's going to be from rack number one. It says here I've got 98 colors here in this rack. So let's see what we pull. 49. And 49 was I end in flesh. This one says it's a flush tone. It kind of seems to be a kind of a light orangish brown. So whereas our Space Marine doesn't currently have any flesh tone showing, we're going to have to get creative for this. So here are our three colors. I end in flesh, woodland green, and faded plum. Before I jump right into the paint job, I want to do a little test drive with my paints to see exactly how they work together or don't. I need to understand how these mixes are going to help us succeed in creating our own custom Space Marine chapter. Hopefully we'll be able to find a mix of colors or combination of colors that excite me. I want the three random colors selected in our Space Marine armor color to be unique. And I'm seeing that the Faded Plum and the Woodland Green really do some interesting things when mixed together. So now that we've mixed the paints, my strategy is to try to go from a really kind of cool azure faded blue down to that pure Woodland Green in the shadows of this armor. Let's begin by painting all the armor. I tend to like to start painting the most important or most impactful area of a model first. I feel like it gives me a little bit more leeway in spending more time on the most important bits because by the time I get to the end of a paint job, I tend to kind of rush things just to finish it up. In this way, my best work is done first. I'm starting with my darkest color for the armor, pure woodland green, and I'll work my way up brighter as I go. 
You'll notice I'm using a pretty small brush for this work and you probably see that this green is hardly noticeable at all over the black primer. It's because I'm working with a fairly thinned paint mixed 50-50 with water. And even from this initial stage, my brush strokes are moving from the area that will be the most in shadow up to the areas that are going to be brightest. Because more pigments are left behind at the end of a brush stroke, this method of painting ensures that we are controlling what is darker and what is lighter on each surface on every stage of the paint job. Yes, this does take longer than just slapping on your base coats with each successive layer. But as with everything in life, speed comes with practice. And I don't just mean speed in applying paint. More importantly, I mean that the more you paint while being mindful of what areas of the surface would catch more light or less, the more you recognize how light hits different shapes. And before you know it, it becomes second nature and you no longer need to think about how a sphere would be painted differently than a cylinder. There's all sorts of different techniques we could utilize to try to build up the color in multiple layers. What I'm trying to do is build up tiny dots and scratches and slashes all over the surface where I continue to build them up in the areas that I want to be brighter and brighter. Only when I've reached full opacity in a color through all these tiny layers do I move on to the next paint. And the color mixing I messed around with prior to painting has paid off a little bit here because I'm once again seeing that this deep green and faded plum mix work together quite nicely. Unlike pre-mixed pigments, they harmonize a bit since they both include blue in their base mixes. This leads to a transition from a deep seafoam green color up to a nice pale azure. This color does stay quite desaturated and as weird as it sounds, a dark green plus a light purple would make a pretty cool looking non-metallic silver the way that it's turning out here. But I don't want my armor of my space marine to look like he's wearing faded blue jeans. So we're gonna have to do something a little bit later to try to bring back some more vibrancy to the armor. Let's take a quick breather from our Space Marine work to talk about this week's sponsor, Artis Opus, and their mystifyingly mystical new product line simply known as Cube. Inside each cube are highly detailed basing bits, rigorously referenced from nature, allowing you to create realistic settings conveniently, easily, and in a way that opens up a whole new world of custom basing, both for individual models and entire armies. There are different environmental options in the upcoming Cube Kickstarter, and the basing uses a modular approach kind of like Lego, where the smaller pieces can fit together to form larger ones, and larger pieces can be broken down and nothing is prescriptive, meaning you can use them however you'd like, your imagination is your only limit. And even the Cube packaging is freaking awesome. It's solid, it's beautiful, and it's a great place to store stuff like tokens or bits, and even fits a magic deck in there if you want to take that on the road. They'll also be offering different inserts so you can customize the boxes too. Each cube contains enough basing materials for roughly 1,000 points of bases in your army. And everything, including the cube box itself, is manufactured in the UK. Now there's probably a good chance that you've never even heard about Q because it's been pretty hush hush up to this point. But if you want to make sure that you don't miss the Kickstarter when it launches this fall, be sure to click the link below and you'll get notified when it's live. A big thank you to Artist Opus for supporting many YouTubers. I think our Space Marine has had enough of a break. Let's get back to him. But before I try to build back that purple into our armor, I want to take an extra step to boost our highlights further. At this point, I'm not continuing to add more of the plum paint to our mix. I'm adding white instead so we can push the contrast from light to dark. But if you did want your Space Marines armor to look nice and chromatic with these shifting little bits of color yet still bright, here's where you could do that. You could go brighter and brighter and make your edge highlights and final little dots pure white to really bring that shine home. One of the aspects of painting from dark to light like we're doing today that I still struggle with is making sure I have nice harmony between mid-tone, shadow, 
and highlight. If you get this wrong, you don't actually have a surface that your eye reads as your mid-tone color because you've got too much highlight and too much shadow. To try to remedy this, I ask myself, moving from one layer to the next, what is the true color of the surface? When the model is completely painted, that color should be most represented on that surface. So when you're building up layers, each layer shouldn't be uniform. There should be a wider area of that midtone and only a smaller areas of the shadows and of the highlights. This can be a little bit tricky, so don't beat yourself up over it, but it's worth it practicing this painting style. At a basic level, just make sure you keep reminding yourself, your midtone should cover most of your shadow and your highlight shouldn't cover up too much of your midtone. That way it'll still read as that true midtone color. And of course, the material the surface is made out of will affect how much of the midtone will be present. A bright shiny sword will have much less of its midtone visible compared to a cotton dress. But that's a complex topic for another day. We don't have time to go over all of that. And as I was implying earlier, using our light plum color to bring our marine armor from a deep green up into a pale blue feels a bit like a cop-out. I do want our plum properly present here on the model, but I also need to be careful so I don't turn this into a meme marine. I thin down our pure faded plum to a glaze consistency, about 10 parts water to one part paint. Then, with almost all the paint dabbed off of the brush on a paper towel, I glazed gently over the highlighted parts of the armor, moving the brush from the darker area towards the brightest area of each surface. But it's important not to actually get any of this paint into our pure green shadows. I'm working with a very thin glaze of our purple because I don't want to overdo it too quickly. I just want a nice tint of purple that I can control. I can always go back with a second or third layer if it's not vibrant enough enough. But if I just make it too thick from the get-go, I'm going to end up with a cotton candy color marine. That's going to be wonderful. Another benefit of glazing like this is it smooths out all the paint underneath. So we have a nice fade up from our mid-tone to our highlights where all those dots and stipples underneath are kind of blended together now. At this point, I'm ready to move on to painting other aspects of the model to see how this armor color really lives with those other colors that are not yet present. I can always go back and change those later. But before I do, I do want to retouch up my edge highlights. They were dulled down a little bit more than I'd like from that glazing, and I want to make sure that they still have some nice crisp edges. Most of the time, Space Marines are primarily one color, but they often do have a secondary color that accents them well. I'm gonna try that with this Idrian Flesh. I'm gonna see if I can make a non-metallic copper or bronze look. I'm not exactly sure if it's gonna look good or not, but we're gonna give it a try anyway. The Aquila, belt buckle, shoulder trim, and backpack vents will all be painted in this color. I'll mix a bit of black into the flesh paint to start as a base coat for all those parts. Being sure to keep that pure black primer in the deepest cracks and most downturn areas of the shoulder pads. We do need to jump from dark to bright fairly quickly to sell this material as metal. Again, remember, metals have less mid-tone showing. So I won't be doing nearly as many mixes for this step. Next, I go straight from the pot with pure Idrian flesh for our second coat. I do wanna make sure that a good portion of our initial darker base coat still shows up as we're painting this mid-tone on. It's easier said than done when it comes to the wings of this Aquila, it's such tiny little spaces. I tend to give my brush a little bit more pressure as I apply an edge highlight along those rings and that pushes the paint just deeper in there so when we come back with a highlight later, we'll see both of those layers. We'll just be doing two highlighting steps for all the copper. The first one is roughly a 50-50 mix with our flesh tone and white and the second one is up to about 75% white, 25% flesh. Again, we want to make sure we're doing big jumps in brightness over small distances to sell that this surface shines. And this strong jump in brightness and opacity is more important than smoothness in our paint to sell to the eye that these things are in fact shiny.
For all the leather bits around his base, I want to keep things really neutral and subdued so your eye isn't drawn to them. I'll mix together some of my flesh color with a black and white to create a gray that has just a little hint of a brown. From there, I just gradually add in more white and make smaller lines and scratches to show some highlights on these surfaces. Just enough work to show that they were painted and they're there, but not wasting time that the viewers aren't gonna spend a whole lot of effort looking at. I mix black and white with varying degrees of brightness to create some grays for quick scratches and edge highlights for the gun, and then move on to our other final details. It's kind of funny how even with three colors, you can find out a way to paint something that looks like parchment, and even it looks close enough to your eye that it just says, yeah, that's paper, I guess. We do kind of suffer from not having a nice vibrant color for the lenses of our Space Marines helmets, but we're gonna have to deal with faded plum, I guess. I'll use a couple of coats to make sure we can make it nice and opaque and as bright as we can, and then I'll go in with a small dot of pure white in the corners of the lenses to make them look like they're shiny. I mean, I gotta say, he doesn't look as much like hot garbage that I thought he was when I first looked at those three paints. It was kind of cool to look at this as a problem that we needed to try to crack. And at the end, we got our own custom Space Marine chapter. Oh, and that reminds me, I told you I was gonna need your help at the end of this video. And here we've done it, we've created our own custom Space Marine chapter, but what the hell do we call it? Like, I'm terrible at naming these kinds of things, so maybe you can help me out. Why don't you put down in the comments below what you think we should name this custom chapter and I will pick the winner based on which one is the coolest, most badass, or most funny, or most inappropriate. I don't know. We'll see. Also, do you think this idea of three paint roulette has enough legs for us to visit it again later? Maybe each time we do a totally different model or a totally different faction? Or maybe every time we keep coming up with new custom chapters of Space Marines, and then we can go to the Warhammer Wiki page and add them ourselves, and then we can create the most ridiculous lore ever about the origin of these custom chapters and all of the space escapades that they find themselves in the middle of. Space Capades. Thanks for hanging out today. I tell you what, I am always amazed by how ridiculous it is that you guys keep coming back and watching these videos. There might be something wrong with you. Oh, and also for liking and subscribing because Lord knows it's illegal to produce a YouTube video without saying the words like and subscribe somewhere. Also, if you're a full-on lunatic and you decide you want to support me in other ways, well, I got you covered there as well. You could come on over and join the cult of the Slayers of the Grey on my Patreon. And there we can hang out on Discord any day of the week. You get access to some other fun rewards and you help me make more of these video. Thank you to my patrons. Also, you could pick up some Ninjon merch down in the links below, as well as use my affiliate links when you're out shopping for your nerdy goodies. And that way you can support me as well. Until next time, thanks for hanging out. Now get out of here and slay the gray. So Space Marines are primarily... Space Marines... Space Marines typically are primarily one color, but they typically... Space Marines are typically prime...